What happens when I go off the map in the Blue Kingdom? Oh. We're going. Beyond Death's Door. Lagoy hound your locomotive circling like comets, spitting fire invective and flame oaths. The weight of their anger so potent it buckles metal and cracks glass, but they can't keep up. You instruct your navigator to hold steady. Ponderously vast, the golden door opens. A cold surgical light spills out. The daily tithe of spirits go rushing in. And far above the throng, your engine barrels screaming through. For a moment, the light subsumes you. Oh, huh, this is an interesting options. Uh, an interesting options? What? An interesting option? Need an indulgence, whatever that means, but uh, pledge your eternal service to the Sapphire King. This will either kill you or remake you. Either way, you will be lost. What an interesting end. Perhaps by bypassing the door, you've proven your worth. Perhaps the judgment will reward you with a higher station. Something beyond life or death. Huh. Can't do that. We could turn back. Or rage against the light of dying. Or discover what happens to spirits beyond death's door. If you fail, you will die. If you succeed, you will have the chance to return back through death's door. Oh my god. God, do I want to do that? What's my chance? 99%! I have to do it, right? Who the hell wouldn't want to know what happens beyond death's door? That is so fucking cool. How badass would it be to say Elizabeth literally went through death's door and turned around and came back? Rage against the light of dying. This will kill you more thoroughly, perhaps, than anyone has ever been killed. <laughs> you will not go gently. On all mortality's behalf, you will mount a, a certainly futile attack on death itself. <laughs> That's interesting. Let's discover what happens to spirits beyond, the, beyond death's door. 99% chance to succeed. You'll need to avoid the patrolling Lagoy, but you must know what awaits in the death beyond death. Success! Oh! Hmm. Hmm. That's a lot of terror. Um. Yeah, okay. The Blue Kingdom unfolds before you. Vast wheels turn, words dance on the wind, a landscape halfway between baffling machine and indecipherable pattern. You still your engines and douse your lights, through binoculars you observe. Great gnarled things with wings descend upon the influx of spirits, snatching them at random. Shades are hoisted into the air, writhing and pinned on spears of light. Struggling weakly, they ascend into the grinding machinery above. Wheels draw them out and expose their insides. Scalpels of light make precise incisions. Before your eyes, they're meticulously dismantled. Their pieces are collected and fed, still squirming into the deeper workings. There's a lot to unpack here. Holy shit. No wonder my terror went up to 95. I'd be fucking terrified. What waits in death? Um, being torn apart by creatures and thrown into machinery. Great. <laughs> Holy shit. Great gnarled things with wings descend upon the influx of spirits, snatching them at random. Hoisted into the air, writhing, pinned on spears of light. Scalpels of light make precise incisions. Dismantled, collected, and fed, still squirming into the deeper workings. Okay, and it talks about uh, Blue Kingdom changing. It looks like a landscape halfway between baffling machine and indecipherable pattern. So the Blue Kingdom is 
like a machine and they're feeding th these spirits are the fuel to keep it running it sounds like and these gnarled creatures with wings are the workers feeding the flames throwing coal in the engine holy shit remember how we heard that no one's allowed to speak of what happens beyond death's door who knows what happens beyond death's door like how, how does anybody else know i know now but how many other people know is it like a, a known thing amongst the elite in the blue kingdom uh, if it is, I'm guessing they don't want to tell anybody because who the fuck would want to be torn apart by sh scalpels of light and thrown into gears? So you pass beyond death's door and then you really die. Holy shit. And this place is full. Like, it's a never-ending line. They can't even deal with how many people want to pass beyond death's door so like tens of thousands hundreds of thousands millions of people i don't know are just like trying to go in here i feel like i should say something like uh don't <laughs> don't go in there jesus christ oh my god Heaven's incandescent. As you stare, the air is split by alarms. A Logos has found you and is calling for reinforcements. Hundreds approach in the distance, a fire that swallows the sky. The lone Logos hurls itself against your hole, catching you in flames. You can't stay a moment longer. You must escape back to the high wilderness or perish. Send engineers to douse the inferno in the engine room. You'll lose ten of your crew. Oof. Plow right through the wall of advancing Lagoy. Hmm, this your hole will be badly damaged. What do I sacrifice? My hole or my crew? I do have the crew to do this. I have 21. Hmm. Alright, what's more badass? That Elizabeth got a peek into hell, the most terrifying place we've ever seen. And then on the escape, sent 10 of their crew to their death or they went into hell and blah 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 all that and they plowed through a wall of advancing fiery Lagoy lighting up the entire sky that's pretty fucking cool yeah that's fine that's not too bad it's only half health now you burst through the flames, leaving the Lagoy in disarray. Glass breaks, metal glows, warps. You streak back to death's door like a ruby-red comet. The Lagoy don't want you to stay any more than you do. The door is open. When you slip through into safety, it slams shut. What a fucked up place. My god, that really is the most disturbing thing I think I've seen in the entire game. Just because of how far reaching it is, right? That's not something that just affects one or a couple or a town or something. That has an untold number of people, spirits, have been torn apart and fed into a machine. And they don't know. No one knows. It keeps happening and happening and happening and no one... No one lives to tell anybody about it. Except, I mean, I guess me, but I... I doubt I'm going to be able to launch a campaign and stop people from going through death's door. Yeah, I think I'd be chased out of the Blue Kingdom if I did that. So, what happens beyond death's door? It's not like some spiritual... It's not like I was picturing some sort of spiritual thing. Something. Something very indistinct, just something spiritual, maybe n nice, I, I don't know. I wasn't expecting it to just be a slaughterhouse. There's nothing spiritual about that at all. They're just like cattle going into a slaughterhouse and the Lagoy are guards all around. Holy shit. 
Okay. We'll return home. Yeah, great. Okay. I have like, yeah, 95. Terror. Um, I don't know what happens when you get to 100 terror. I probably die in some weird way. Oh, the only way I can reduce terror is by going straight here and hoping there's something there for me to reduce my terror with. Let's go. Lequasitor presents its invoice. Oh, right, we hired them for like a month. He would be grateful for a prompt settlement of his expenses and expected emolimations on account for the forthcoming month. Ah, so basically pay them for their future service or tell them, no, we've, you've served enough. We're done. Yeah, I'll definitely pay you to stay on. Please do. 100 sovereigns. It looks disappointed. I would prefer a lurid novella, or perhaps the collected proceedings of an especially disreputable parliament. But it marks the bill is paid. <laughs> right, money has no meaning here. Remember the person who just threw it out the window? It only means something because it means something to me. Fire in the hold. Ah, we got a critical damage. Shit. We did get a little bit of terror reduction because we have discovered a new port, right? Uh, da, 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 fire's broken out in the hold. Hmm. I need to do whatever's not going to increase terror. <laughs> Using my crew, 33% chance of success. Nah. Oh, we can smother the fire with Thirsty Bombazine because I have some on board. Yes! Bombazine drinks light and abhors fire. A roll of it might stop the fire in its tracks. Hell yes. Unrolling the Bombazine, you let it soak itself in the flickering light as long as you dare. Then, with the aid of your crew, cast it over the fire. Smoke fills the hold. The Bombazine is charred and spoiled, but the fire is defeated and the munitions saved. Excellent. Ah, this isn't Death's Door, but Death's Door Step. <laughs> Looks like a log cabin. The catafalk. Anyway, you got anything to, uh, can I get a, uh, an, uh, tear reduction? Hmm, to export immaculate souls. Does have a jumble of undistinguished souls as a bargain. I'll take all of that. A knot of houses surrounds the station. Past to these, the landscape declines into mud and misery. Somewhere beneath that bleak mire lies the catafalque, where spirits approach their end. Death's doorstop. An austere, ugly little town has sprung up around the station, built and inhabited by spirits too afraid to pass beyond the door. You should be afraid. Don't. Don't do it. It has no official name, because officially it should not exist. But some of the Blue Kingdom bureaucrats sneeringly call it Death's Doorstop. Beyond it, the endless furrows. An endless expanse of churned black mud. Wander the streets of the officially nameless town. A town of spirits too cowardly to pass on. There are few such specimens. Only the most committed kind of cowardice can survive death. As you're making your way along a mean and narrow boulevard, you notice a weary spirit hurrying towards you. It clutches a jar containing its voice babbling frantically. Not far behind it are two dead bureaucrats, citing the spirit's violations of its status as one of the yoked. They're gaining on the spirit whose jar has now begun to sob hysterically. I think we had a similar encounter somewhere else. I know we tried to help them and it, I don't think it worked. You unlock this by having no testament of the feather. So maybe if I had a testament of the feather, I'd be able to really help them. 
I mean, I should try to help it anyway, right? I just hope it doesn't increase my terror. Good, it didn't. Mm. Quickly tie review the find the spirit's name in their book, and in so doing, compel it to emerge. Yeah, that's the same thing that happened last time. Make my way to the endless furrows. Careful, the mud can devour a boot hole. Once, the vast grounds around Death's Door were, were called the Seven Concentric Gardens. There were flowers, grass, trees, leaves still attached. Now, there's mud. A squalid black hungering mud and a seething sea of the masked dead, digging and scrabbling, churning, overturning, searching. Useless now to try to cultivate even a blade of grass, but a few yoked, a few yoked gardener spirits dash between the trenches, rakes and hoes aloft. They're still stubbornly attempting the impossible. Oh, I need to go here for the navigator's quest. Oh, this is also where I can search for the industrialist's lost love. Okay. Mm, yeah, speak with a sedulous devil about the navigator's quest. The devil rushes towards you. He's charged with handling a specific set of unusual cases. And apparently Alton, born upon his friend's back, is one. A firm handshake. Let's get you where you need to be. Just the one. The devil pulls out a pair of calipers to measure Alton's left ear. But this way. He leads you past rows of shuffling dead. As you walk, the devil squints at the navigator first through one eye, then the other. Oh, that is clever. He gestures downward to a stone slab coated in mud. This door for Alton. The devil turns to the navigator, shaking his head. Your circumstances were a poor fit for your soul, so you changed your circumstances. A neat trick. Man fits you much better. He turns several pages on his clipboard. Sign here, please. And then, with another handshake, he's scurrying back across the furrows. You heave Alton's door open and drop into the darkness below. Oh, 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 I get it. Yeah, there was something I was totally missing. I... Um, yeah, the devil squinting at the navigator, one eye then the other. Oh, that is clever. Your circumstances were a poor fit for your soul, so you changed your circumstances. A neat trick. Man fits you much better. That's right, they're talking about the fact that the navigator is a trans man. I guess the devil hasn't seen someone like that before, but then was like, oh, I get it. Below the mud, you find yourself in the Catafalque, a candle-decked labyrinth filled with endless lines of shuffling silent dead. Death's door waits at the other end of the tunnels. Most of the candles are burned to stubs, leaving the floor caked with runnels of wax. Lagoy, the living words of the sun, patrol the tunnels. Their elegant sigil forms roar with fire. They and a few stubborn candles are the only light left. Whoa, there's a lot I can do. Return. Go deeper into the catafalk. Recruit crew from among the waiting dead. Nah, I don't need more crew. I'm doing pretty good on that. Scour the scrawled messages on the wall. Offer help to a lightless spirit. Mm, you'll inherit the lightless spirit's soul flaw. So that will give me the lightless thing, right? Which wasn't that... Was that the thing I needed to... I forgot exactly what it was called, but something about pledging allegiance to the Sapphire King when I went off the map here. I think that required a lightless soul. Do I want to be lightless? Probably not. Uh. Or join the queuing dead for the quest. Let's scour the scrawled messages on the walls. The walls are etched with the final words of the voiceless. If you hold up a candle, you can make out some coherent words. Messages from the dead. She held my head beneath the waves, my murderer, my love. God, I am sorry for my sins with all my heart. If you, re if you read this, I'm sorry. <coughs> Excuse me. 
Excuse me. Where are you? Where are you? Eaten by... Not fair. T -t -t I was hungry too. Is this all there is? This place is incredibly disturbing. Just the Blue Kingdom in general. God. Let's join the queuing dead. The fortunate navigator holds Alton as he did when he first carried him from the tomb, like a knapsack on his back. The navigator's face is as expressionless as a waxen mask. He moves closer to you so that his shoulder brushes your arm. Captain, before the navigator is an endless line of the dead, plodding in silent acceptance, the navigator gazes ahead, peering into the dark. He leaves the line. This isn't right, he says. Take us back, Captain. This is a mistake. Well, let's search for the industrialist's lost love. Perhaps you'll be lucky and she hasn't already entered the catafalque. You trudge up and down the furrows, calling the lost love's name and asking shades if they've seen her. They respond with a shrug. You're forced to pause when you lose a boot in the mire. She's already entered the catafalque, you know, says a voice from below. Rescuing your boot from the mud, you turn to discover a yoked spirit looking up at you from a nearby trench. I heard you calling her name, he says apologetically. I met her a few weeks ago. She found her door and she's in the catafalque now. If you want to follow her, you'll have to dig. Oh, that's how it... Wait, that's how it works? She found her door. If you want to follow her, you'll have to dig. You have to dig in the mud to find the door for you? I Holy shit. And remember, it used to be all like green and beautiful, right? And then now it's just turned to mud. Huh. I'll have to advance through the tunnels to find her. I, I just don't want to do anything that's going to increase my terror, but like, I don't know what's going to increase my terror. I'd like it if something reduced my terror, but I don't think anything here is really very happy, right? I mean, we're on death's, death's doorstop. Death's doorstop or death's doorstep. Whichever one. Like, if I want it to be super, super, super safe, I could try to go back to the Reach. I don't know. I'm at 81% terror. Do I have enough time to get all the way down to this relay and then to somewhere where it's going to reduce my terror? I suppose if I just go back to Sky Barnet, that'll reduce my terror. Because that's the hub area and I haven't been there in a while. scared of this much terror. I should come back. I should not do this right now, right? I have so much fucking terror. I just... I just saw what happens when people pass through death's door. I think I should take a break. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. But we can at least speak with a fortune navigator. Oh, wait. I need to do this other thing, don't I? Ah, I need a gourd of chorister nectar. Okay, yeah, I need to head back to Sky Barnet. I want to take the most direct route, because time... That unfortunately looks like it means going through an unexplored area, which I don't like. But... Let's do it. I'm going to go down here. And then here. Do I need supplies? Not really. I guess a couple fuel, sure. Still don't know what's up with the petrichor versus supplies, but can't do anything about that. I'm not going to fight anything. Unless I have to.
hear gunfire below me. Yulula. Newly made creations once passed over this span as they left the forge. Oh, are we near the forge of souls? Hello. Fuck off. Oh god. Oh god. Oh my god, no. Well, I was gonna go over that way, but I don't think I want to go towards those things, so let's go this way. Thankfully, they seem to be pretty busy. Um, can I pass through here? I don't think I can. Should I keep going this way? Uh... I try to turn around? No, no, there, no. Nope. Oh. Oh, uh, this might be able to reduce my terror, maybe? Trade living food for gemstones. That sounds like a really, really good trade, but... Terror is more important right now. Join the silent celebration. I've got a 20% chance of success. What happens if I fail? Uh, I failed. I think it just did nothing. I lost three crew. About half your crew are now Shades of the Dead. Your crew participate eagerly in the revel. At some point, additional masks are produced and passed out. Your crew don them as a gesture of courtesy. Intoxicating starlit waters are served in golden cups. There's general indulgence. Later, there's an exchange of masks. After the revel is concluded, some of your crew aren't to be found. Are they behind one of the porcelain masks among the ranks of the dead? What is more, some of those working in the engine room now seem to be silent shades, diligently working as if they had always been there. So, some of them did a swap -a Okay. Oh, God. This is bad. <laughs> Look at how far I'm having to go. Come on, please. Let me get through. 88%. But find a new port, that would reduce terror. So, I guess that's worth doing. Oh, hey. If I can freaking get there. Oh, God. What? What? What just spotted me? That sounds like a Lugoy. Oh, Jesus. Oh, fucking hell. I'm... Um, yep. Man, this place is brutal. So, where's my last autosave? The catafalk. Okay, well now I can... Now I know I should go straight down here. Or just all the way back around here, maybe. <laughs> rather than to the right. Alright, let's try that again. Jesus. That clusterfuck of enemies will probably still be here. But I guess I'll just push through them. Side. Oh, 
I could try to kill a random Lagoy that's not attacking me. And do the reduced terror thing, but the reduced terror thing reduced my terror by like 10. I'd probably gain that much just trying to kill it. Oh, that hurt a lot. Mm, claim a trophy. This will give experience or reduce tear. Please reduce tear. Thank you. Not very much, though. Ooh. Hold on. It's a thing. Oh, plunder. I was hoping it was spending more time with the dead. All oh, right, at least we got our crew back. Because the save was from before that whole thing happened. Kill it. Oh god. Oh god. Oh no. Ooh, I'm dead. Mm, I have like one hit point. Holy shit. <clears throat> Claim a trophy? Yep. Reduced hair? Thanks. Oh, I failed, but it reduced hair. That's fine. Claim a trophy? Failure, but still reduced hair? Great. I, I have, like, no hit points. Claim a trophy. Reduced hair. Wow, I failed every time. I have three hit points. All right. Great. These can give you holes sometimes. It did not. Ah, oh, that one did. Thank God. Thirteen health. Woo. Hey, I didn't know Contangri were here. Can I get a, uh, terror reduction? No. I mean, I could leave it untouched. Does that reduce terror? No, that just does nothing. hit hard. Other really artifacts? That's more important than sovereigns. Hold on, there's something back... go. Oh, the thing on the mantelpiece. It's begun to appear persistently in your dreams. Ah, yeah, we've had that happen before. Hmm. Ooh. I could smash it to reduce my terror by 50, but increase my nightmares. Uh, well, I definitely can't do anything that increases my terror. If I burn it, then I just won't get any terror. That would be good. But what's surrendering it to? 
don't know. Let's let's surrender and see what happens. Your shades have been hovering unobtrusively outside of your door since you brought it aboard. It reduced my terror. One sips forward to take the artifact from you. It bows low before turning to carry its new prize away. You do not think you see it again. Certainly there is one less mask among the faces of your crew. Oh, it just left, left. Um, yeah, what is this? It's the first time I've ever seen this. It's beautiful. It's like a geode or something. I was wondering when it was going to pop up. A cask of Navartine gems. Oh, that is fantastic. Hmm. First taste of Petrocore. Oh, yeah. So it does automatically start using it when you run out of supplies. You've eaten the last of your mundane supplies. Now your cook has begun to serve Petrocore, the food that the dead eat. It looks like familiar foods, fruits and breads and pies, but is as pale as the ghost of a moon. It smells like a meadow after rainfall, and when you bite it, it has a consistency and a hurried sweetness of spun sugar. Uh -huh. I don't know. <laughs> I feel like something's going to happen if I indulge myself, but let's do it. Indulge. Gain to dining with the dead. Despite its fragility and the speed with which it melts on your tongue, the petrichor is filling. It all has that same sugary taste, regardless of whether it looks like loaves or meat. But if everything must taste the same, surely it's better to taste sweet than bitter. Go carefully, comrade, the cook warns when you return for seconds. If you eat too much petrichor, it can make it harder to leave the lands of the dead. Oh. Claim a trophy. Success. Experience. Claim a trophy. Success. Experience. Of course, experience does literally nothing for me. my terror right yes by a lot but still i'm still gonna go back to the reach and get my terror to like zero before i come back <laughs> fucking hell all right uh let's go to the embassy and turn in port reports i suppose i only had two port reports okay two gratitude This exchanges gratitude for a volume of notes in the Blue Kingdom. Oh yeah, I did that once. I've already got some notes, so that's fine. I think I needed some gratitude to repair the locomotive. Yeah. Let's do it. 
Back up to full. Yeah, didn't even have to pay any coin. Just the gratitude itself. Okay. That's good. The engineer pointed to you is accompanied by a trio of masked, spanner-carrying shades. His apprentices. He directs their work, but they learn very quickly. This seems to distress him. I've yet to find anything the dead can't do better, he confides. <laughs> is there anything else to do here? I don't need a new litigator. I don't need more crew. Oh yeah, prospects. Caged catches for death's door. How many spots do I have? I mean, I could get rid of some of these, of course. Immaculate souls for the white well. Oh, that's a lot of money. Immaculate souls are expensive. How many do I have stored up in my bank? Because I also use them to reduce tears sometimes. Oh, I've got plenty. Yeah, I've got 13 in total. Yeah, I took the Immaculate Souls one because that's going to be a real big money earner. Um, I'm not going to take the other one. It'll hopefully still be there when I get back. And I don't want to get rid of these. All three of these are for this region. Um, this one is for the Circus, which maybe seems kind of pointless. But I think I'm about to go to the Circus to reduce my terror. So I want to keep that one. Let's... Whoa, <laughs> didn't get far. Indoor. Success. Terror increase. Let's go back to the Reach. Oh, hey. Hold on. There's one thing I can do before I go back to the Reach. Get a Gourd of Corister Nectar and talk to the Fortunate Navigator. Console the Fortunate Navigator. He was about to fulfill his childhood promise, but he turned away from Death's door. Alton's corpse only reminds him of his failure. The navigator clenches the hot toddy you've brought him. It's nice. He manages after the first sip. And thank you. After the fourth. When the mug is finally empty, he turns to the corpse of Alton, propped to face the window. The family tomb was no good. Too gloomy. Too dark. But you were at death's door. You saw them. Alton deserves better. He puts his mug down, meets your eyes. I've been thinking about alternatives. He must have a sky burial. It's not traditional, but I think it would appeal to Alton's sense of poetry. I need to leave him somewhere in the high wilderness. But where? Oh, wow, I actually have input here. The most serene mausoleum. It rests by a dead sun. Only those in high favor with her renewed majesty are permitted burial there. It is an exalted place. Nah, fuck that place. A weft of unraveled time. He'd be casting Alton into the tumultuous throes of frenzied time, and it would be tremendously dangerous to get there. That's an adventure itself. I like that one. The mother of mountains. He could be taken to the very peak. He'd be surrounded by only the winds and the open sky. Rest after his adventures. The avid horizon. It's an eerie, beautiful location. A thing of wonder. A liminal place. Caught between the past and the future. Hmm, that'd be my second favorite. Titania. It's the most beautiful part of the Reach. Itself a place of new beginnings and lifelong adventures. That should surely suit him. Yeah, but Alton, like... Alton was promised adventure in the skies, you know? Being thrown into a weft of unraveled time? That is fucking cool. That is cool. Definitely that one. That is it. Yes. The navigator moves to embrace you. He remembers himself and offers a handshake. No, come on, hug me, please. That's perfect. A last journey to an uncertain destination. If he'd known this could be his last resting place, he would have begged me to arrange it. Yeah, it's such a cool end. All right, we can have any trouble getting back to the Reach. What is this? Uh-oh. If you have eaten Petricor, you must deal with the Inhabitor before you can leave. Walk deeper into the relay, passing between the Jackals. 
As you do, they will close behind you, following at your heels down a flight of gloomy stairs. Seek an audience with the inhabitor of the threshold. The air smells of oil and hot metal. Faint light issues from glass lenses hung on the walls. Within each lens, a soul stirs, wispy with aloof, glittering eyes. The inhabitor waits amidst the wheels and pistons of the relay's mechanisms. It, or they, sits on a bronzewood stool. At first, the servitor looks like two dark, long-limbed figures sitting back to back, but they're fused together at the spine, the elbows, and the back of the skull. Each of its heads wears a death mask depicting the same serene, vulpine face. One turns towards you. The other, inevitably, turns away. The inhabitor is one, or two, of the dead, and so forbidden to speak. Instead, it keeps the voice of a departed spirit in a clay jar which speaks on its behalf. I have been appointed to conduct the rites of departure, the voice jar says in gravelly tones. You have enjoyed the king's hospitality, for the span of the sky is his house, and you have eaten bread from his table. There is an expectant pause. Inquire about the rites of departure. Claim ignorance regarding the customs of this realm. Yes, the inhabitor says solemnly. I understand that elsewhere the laws of hospitality have eroded beyond recognition. A host has three obligations to his guest. The first is protection. The westernmost king, with his sword of sunlight, shields us from the lawless miseries of other quarters of the sky. Here you have seen the heavens as they are meant to be. The second is sustenance. Thus he provides petrichor to nourish all who linger here. The third is courtesy, for he has asked you no questions as to your nature or presence. You have been permitted here. In return, the guest has only two responsibilities. To be no burden and to offer gifts unto their host before departure. King Petricor, the fruit of the dead, binds you to the Blue Kingdom. Before you can leave, you must offer gifts or abandon treasures claimed in the Blue Kingdom to lower dining with the dead, dining with the dead, to zero. Mm, ooh, a cask of gemstones reduced dining with the dead by three. That would do it. Vision of the heavens reduces it by two. Well, that sounds pretty good. Better than gems. I don't want to waste something and, you know, I only have two Dining with the Dead, I think. Two or three. I don't want to use something like a Moment of Inspiration to reduce it by seven. Speak a word of parting. Oh, this is, this reduces it to zero, no matter what it is. So it's not reducing it by a specific number. It just makes it zero. Mm, Testament of Salt. I don't want to use it on this, though. Leave your heart in trust, as surety you will return. I think it's going to take six hearts. Oof, no. Now, let's do a vision of the heavens. So be it, the inhabitor says. Wash the glory of his kingdom from your eyes with salt water and ash. A bull will be brought. Indeed, a bull is brought in the clamped jaws of a jackal spirit. The ritual stings, but soon the dazzle is scrubbed from your sight. Salt water and ash in our eyes? Hmm. Okay, we still have one dining with the dead, actually, so let's do another vision of the heavens. Your debt is paid, the, inhabitor vo the inhabitor's voice jar in tones. If you wish, you may return to your chariot and the way will open. Return to the relay. Ask to travel to the reach. And we're back in the reach where everything is so much safer. So what the hell is this? An unfortunate case of desiccation. <laughs> 
The shades you recruited in the Blue Kingdom have gathered at the windows. As the light of strange stars falls on them, they begin to turn inexorably to salt. Oh. Right, I just brought shades back to the reach. Shit. Their skin desiccates, becoming glittering and rough. Joints stiffen, extremities, then whole limbs fall to the ground and break into chunks. Some of the shades continue to stare, wrapped through the windows. Others look to you, their eyes quizzical in their masks. Some hurry to dark corners of your locomotive. It does not help. Soon there is nothing left of them but mounds of salt and cracked porcelain masks. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. Conduct a hasty funeral. Clean it away. Have your cook sweep up the salt. It will make your supplies last longer. No, you gross. Conduct a hasty funeral? What else can you do? There goes five of my crew. The ceremony is curt and hesitant. What can you say about the silent shades that served under you? You knew nothing of their lives or their deaths. Your eulogy is hollow. Did they know this would happen? Did they want it? Had they returned to the Blue Kingdom? Was a glimpse of other stars all they longed for? Went to New Winchester and recruited some more people, dropped off stuff in the bank, bought a bunch of supplies and all that good stuff. And now I'm at the circus. Just got my terror down to zero. Also have a prospect to complete. 775 profit. Plus a vision of the heavens. Okay, well, I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode. So I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, I'm going to see if there's any little bits of business that I can take care of in the Reach before I head back to the Blue Kingdom. 